I'm sharing with you uh, from the book of Thessalonians. Uh, today will be the last day on the first Thessalonians. And we are going to do it from chapter 4, verses 13 to chapter 5, verse 11. Chapter 4, verse 13 to chapter 5, verse 11. Before I do that, I want you to uh, just uh, have a recap of the whole thing. First Thessalonians, you know, we dealt with, we are learning from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians church. This place was called Thessaloniki. This place was called Thessaloniki, am I right? And you know, this place uh, was founded one by one of the uh, uh, army generals of Alexander the Great. Uh, and here, uh, Apostle Paul went and he established a beautiful church. Uh, he went to this place, a very hard place. Uh, that was, there was a temple built for Caesar. And everybody worshipped Caesar and nobody wanted to worship Jesus Christ. But Apostle Paul went to this tough place and he shared the gospel of Jesus Christ in three, ring, three weeks. The synagogues he went and during three Sabbaths he shared the word of God. And there we learned the thing is that how they started to gossip the gospel. Everybody say gossip the gospel. When you start to gossip the gospel, the gospel will spread. And the Bible says that how the people in other areas came to Achaia and other areas came to know about, you know, the growth of the church in Thessaloniki. And that's why the letter written to the Thessalonians. And then we dealt in the second week about the Christian ministry. How Apostle Paul was defending himself in the midst of, uh, you know, severe, you know, accusation about him. People started to demine him. People wanted to somehow put him down and say he's not a good, you know, apostle. That's why he ran away. But Apostle Paul so beautifully shared about how, you know, uh, he was a called person by God to preach the gospel. And the third week we dealt with about the Christian behavior. How we have to live to please God and not people. So that was the third week we dealt. That about the Christian behavior. We need to please God and not people. When you please God, God will bless you and you can prosper in life. And today I want to share with you the fourth lesson from the book of Thessalonians. Is about the resurrection and the second coming of Jesus Christ. How many of you in this place believe that Jesus is going to come very soon? I didn't hear except one hallelujah. You know, how many of you really believe that Jesus is going to come? I want you together to tell a hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus is going to come. Hallelujah. hallelujah. That's our hope. That's the hope of Christians. I said Christianity is the only, you know, relationship which God has established with man. And Christians are the only ones who have a hope that after death, they will be taken up by Jesus Christ to live together with him forever and ever in the heavenly place. No other religion, no other person in the world has taught so clearly about life after death except Christianity. Christianity believes that when a man is in Christ Jesus, when he dies, we will be able to say that when we hear the trumpet, sound all those who are down all those who are dead will rise up and all those who are alive will be caught up in the air and we will live together in the presence of God forever and ever for the glory of God we are not a religion but we are a relationship we have a relationship with our heavenly father we don't talk about a dead God but we talk about a God who is alive and powerful because Jesus rose from the grave every Christian will rise up from the grave when he is dead and that is the hope of the church can somebody praise him praise him give him the best clap offering worship him right now we have hope in Jesus hallelujah that's why we sing that song in that sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In that sweet by and by. You got that song? We shall meet 
on that beautiful shore. Every Christian who is born again has a beautiful place in heaven. Hallelujah. Jesus is not coming for some dead people. He is coming for those who have received him as his savior and master. So we are going to see right now the return of Christ is very powerful. Hallelujah. So let's read this scripture. Can you put it on the screen? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to chapter 5 verse 11. Okay, let's all read. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Verse 14. Verse 14. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Verse 15. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Continue. Therefore, Encourage one another with these words. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. Verse 2. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Continue. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly. As labor pains on a pregnant woman. And they will not escape. But you brothers and sisters. Are not in darkness. So that this day should surprise you. Like a thief. Verse 5. You are all children of the light. And children of the day. We do not belong to the night. Or to darkness. Verse 6. So then let us not be like others. Who are asleep. But let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober. Putting on faith and love as the breastplate. And the hope of salvation as a helmet. Verse 9. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Hallelujah. So the second coming of Jesus Christ this prayer has three major ingredients. Apostle Paul, number one, he's saying that your love would increase and overflow for each other and for everyone. Number one, Apostle Paul says that because we are expecting Jesus to come, let the love in the house of God increase for one, to one another. Number two, he says, let your hearts 
be strengthened so that you will live a life blameless and holy. Number one, he says, let the, you know, let the love increase. Number two, he says, your heart must be strengthened. Number three, he says, be prepared for the glorious coming of Jesus Christ. Number one, your love must increase. Number two is that your hearts will be strengthened. Number three is that we will be prepared for the glorious coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share with you, number one is the first R is the return of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The return of Jesus Christ. The first R is the return of Jesus Christ. Christians are to expect the personal and universally experienced return of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 4, 16, it says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel. This is something that is taught clearly by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We must remember that Jesus Christ is going to come from heaven. The return of Jesus is true. The return of Jesus is powerful. If Jesus is not returning back, why you and I, we have to come to church and worship God and trust in God. Believe that Jesus Christ is coming back. Hallelujah. When Pastor Basson sent me the materials, as I was sitting and reading and meditating, I said to myself, this is the confidence Christians have that we have don't have, you know, like a dead hope, but we have a deadly hope. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, not a dead hope, but a deadly hope. Because we know that Jesus Christ is coming. Turn to your neighbor and say, he is coming. Jesus is coming. He is going to take the church to be with him forever and ever. Imagine, we are all worshipping one Sunday. Suddenly Jesus comes. That will be the greatest day in your life and my life. Hallelujah. You can't say, hey, I got to check about my FD. I have to check about my land. I have to check about my car. I have to check this, check that. No checking that time. All those who are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ will be caught up in the air. And we will be with Jesus forever. Don't know. When you're driving your car, Jesus may come. When you're in the plane, Jesus may come. All the plane pilots who do not know Jesus, the pilots who know Jesus will be taken up. The people, passengers. Sad for them. Nobody will know where the plane is going. Because the pilots will be taken up. All those who are in Christ will be taken up. And they will live together in the presence of God. Because Jesus is coming. Come on somebody. Say a hallelujah to my Jesus. If your father or mother, brother or sister, they died knowing Jesus, they will be up there. The return of Christ is what Apostle Paul says to the Thessalonian church. Listen to me. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. I want you to back up with several scriptures. I'm not just giving you one scripture. John chapter 14, 1 to 3. My father's house has many rooms. Hallelujah. How many rooms you have in your house? Two-bedroom house, we walk like kings. Three-bedroom apartment, we are like the chief minister. By mistake, if you have eight-bedroom house, nobody can touch you. But in my father's house, 
there are unlimited rooms. Can somebody clap your hands and worship him? In my father's house, there are unlimited rooms. In my father's house, it's not a cow shed. It's a mansion he has prepared for the church of Jesus. Jesus said, Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who was taken into heaven will come back again. Hallelujah. Number one, Jesus said, I have prepared mansions for you. Number two, the angels are saying, why are you looking here and gazing up? He said, don't worry. He is coming back again to take us to be with him forever. Number three, the apostles believed in James chapter 5 and verse number 8. James said, you too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you feel like going now itself? So many are doubtful. <laughs> if I had asked the same question, how many of you won one million? I'm sure everybody would have lifted their hands. Only a very few sad ones lifted quickly. And now they are realizing and they put their hand down. <laughs> I say to you, my friends, whatever you say, be patient. The one who has said will truly come. He said, I will send my son. He sent his son. He said, my son will be born to a virgin. And the child was born to a virgin. And he said, he will be born in a manger. And Jesus was born in a manger. And he said that they will beat him up. They will squash him. They will whip him. They will crucify him it happened and he said he will rise again on the third day and he rose on the third day and now he says he is coming back come on come on come on praise him right now turn to your neighbor and say maranatha Maranatha means what? Come Lord Jesus. The beautiful thing is, whether you are black or white, blue or red, purple or pink, all will be caught up in the air to be with Jesus. Feels good, right? When you drive your car and go. Somebody said, if you drive slowly, you must sing that song. You know, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. But if you drive a little faster, you must sing. Nearer my God to thee. If you drive really fast, you must sing, I am coming home. So for every speed level, we have a Christian song. I say to you today, whatever the situation, we are all going to heaven to see our master, Jesus. Somebody clap your hands and praise him by now. The return of Christ. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 28 it says. I gave you John 14 1 to 3. Acts 1 11. James 5 8. 1 John 2 28. And now dear children continue in him. 
so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you are doing things which are against the will of God, when Jesus comes, you will be caught up in a surprise. And that time you can't repent because those who are not ready will be left in this world. They will go through the worst tribulation. People who do not deny Jesus, they will be persecuted. But those who believe in the Lord Jesus before he comes itself will be taken up into heaven. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 29, the demons they said, what do you want with the son of God? They shouted, have you come here to torture us? Before, which is the appointed time. The appointed time is when we all are caught up in the air. We will live with Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ comes back and his feet will touch the Armageddon war. His feet will touch the hill, the Mount Zion. And the, and, the, and the Zion will split into two. And that's the time the nations will rise up. And all the nations will come together to fight with Jesus. And you know that time Jesus will not fight with them. He will speak a word and everybody will be destroyed. And that's the time the kingdom of God will be established. And and that's the time Satan will be bound and will be thrown into the lake of fire once and for all. Turn to your neighbor and say, if the demons believe about the coming of Christ, why don't you believe? Demons also believe. That the master is coming. Return of Jesus. Number two. That is the, this is the beautiful part. The resurrection of all believers. Hallelujah. In Hosur Road Cemetery, no more place to bury people. But I say to you, there is enough room in heaven. All the believers, all the believers, imagine dear friends, in chapter 4 verse 14, 1 Corinthians 15, 12 to 58, both of those who died and others who are alive at the coming of the Lord, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14, for be, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. You got that? Because Jesus rose from the grave, we know that we will also rise up together. Chapter 4 verse 16 for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. The dead in Christ will rise first. Wow. Entire Hosur Road Cemetery. Maybe 50-70% will be empty. Sometimes people say, when somebody dies, don't cry. I tell them, allow them to cry. The pain of losing your loved one is always there. But the joy is, we are going to see them again. Hallelujah. A man went fishing. He took his son and his friend's son. As they went fishing, suddenly there was a big storm. And when the storm hit, the ship Broke into pieces. Now the father had only one rope. He, has to he had to decide now. Whether to save his son. Or to save his friend's son. So the father decided. And he said to himself. My son knows Jesus. If he dies today. He will go to heaven. But my friend's son. He doesn't know Jesus. So he said I will throw the rope. To my friend's son. And I will save him. 
so that one day I can tell about Jesus to my friend's son and tell him that your friend is in heaven now. So the father, he threw the rope and he saved his friend's son. And one evening, there was a big meeting. The pastor came and he told the congregation. And he said, today we have a guest speaker for us. So the guest speaker came and he told the story. The same story I told you right now. And after that, everybody cried. The elderly man went and sat down. After service, people went to him and said, Sir, we don't think that what the father had done was good. He should have saved his son. The old man looked at the people and said, I am the father who saved the son's friend, my, my friend's son, and allowed my son to die. And you know what? Your pastor is the one I saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is what is the hope we have in Jesus. This is the hope. That's why Apostle Paul says, Believers, remember, when you are in Christ, you have a beautiful place in heaven. And that's the place a wonderful, joyful place. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. In Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2 it says, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. And every mouth that confesses Jesus is Lord will be brought into this eternal life. Do you like a life to live here, enjoy and die? Or do you like a life waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So number one, the rapture is going to take place. Number two, it is for the resurrection of the believers. The first R is what? The first R, the return of Christ. The second R is the resurrection of the believers. The third R is the rapture. Everybody say rapture. Say it again, rapture. The word rapture. The English word rapture is not found in the Bible. You will never see the word rapture in the Bible. The word rapture means to cease. First Thessalonians 4, 17, it says, caught up, caught up. See there, we will be caught up together with them in the clouds. The word caught up means uh, to be snatched up with a suddenness and violence. The purpose of this violent actual rapture will be to unite the Christians who are alive with the Christians who are dead. So why does this rapture take place? Imagine suddenly we rise up and we are caught up in the air. How beautiful it will be. <laughs> Hallelujah. So why is this rapture? Number one, to unite Christians who are alive with the Christians who are dead. Number two, to unite both the dead and the alive with Jesus Christ. Number three, after resurrection, the living and the dead will live together with Jesus. Hallelujah. We all will be together in the presence of God. The dead and the alive will live together in the presence of God forever and ever. 
Hallelujah. That is why we Christians. Vatta vatta valarra. Kotta kotta oyarra. Ala nila ariyama. Kala udada. Yena. How much ever you punish them. How much ever you persecute them. They will rise up again. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody clap your hands. And praise him right now. My Jesus is coming. Number one. Number one. The return of Christ. Number two. The resurrection of the believers. Number three. The rapture. Number four. The reunion. The reunion. See, this is what Paul was telling to the Thessalonian church. The reunion. 4 verse 17. The living and the dead will be together. At Christ's coming. We'll meet the Lord and we'll be with the Lord forever. Chapter 4 verse 17 after that, we who are still alive and are left will be taken up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. The reunion will take place. The living and the dead will be together. We will meet the Lord and will be with the Lord forever. And Apostle Paul says, be strong in this conviction that Jesus is going to come. Turn to your neighbor and say, nobody knows when he is going to come. Nobody knows. Imagine if Jesus said that he is coming in the month of June. Till June 10th if he is coming. Till June 8th, we will never come to church. And June 9th, everybody will be in the church, Simon. I'm 100% sure. Am I right? Anyway, tomorrow is coming. Let's go today and be there. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come, Lord Jesus. That's what Apostle Paul is telling to the Thessalonians church. Jesus is coming. So some of the fellows, when they heard this teaching, they stopped working. They said, anyway, Jesus is coming. Why work? Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow is coming. So don't want to work. So Paul said, just because Jesus is coming, don't be idle. Work till he comes. And when he is coming, also keep working. So that you can be taken up into the air from the place where you are working. Hallelujah. This is the last part of First Thessalonians. If you are blessed by today's message or need prayer or want to support this ministry, please call the number on your screen right now or log on to www.fgag.tv.